Welcome to Midwest Architecture and Design. My name is Jordan Powers. I'm a photographer based in Southern Minnesota, photographing projects across the Midwest for architects, designers, and builders. And today I'm talking with Renee Keller. Now, if you didn't watch or listen to the introductory episode, please go, so, go and do that now so that you have an idea as to why we're doing this podcast. So I've been working with Renee for a couple of years now on, on different projects, and uh, this is the first time we've ever actually sat down and talked about her business and how she works and uh, just learning about her process a little bit more. Also, we talk about how she got into design in the first place and many other things. If you'd like to follow along with Renee's work, you can do so at Renee Keller Interior Design on Instagram, and you can follow me on Instagram at Jordan Powers without the vowels. Enjoy this episode with Renee Keller. Well, Renee, thanks for joining me on this uh, first episode. Oh, um, you're welcome. Yeah. So, well, let's start from the beginning. So, yeah. tell everybody about tell everybody about yourself. So, Renee Keller Interior Design. Like, where did where did this whole concept come from? How did you get started in design? And let's just go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I uh, started in design in 1996. I um, was lucky enough to get a, a job with a, a large firm here in Minneapolis and worked there for nine years and worked for another year for, or another firm for four years and then I started my own business in 2010. Mm -hmm. So this is my 11th year with Renee Keller Interior Design and um, it was a very flexible business and um, I had a you know, young family mm -hmm. and so I was able to work um, my own hours and I was able to grow it as slowly as I need to. So it has been a great um, thing for our family and I have loved every minute of it. How did you decide to go into design in the first place? Because did you go to school for design or? Yep, okay. I did go to school for design. I have a Bachelor of Science in Interior Design. Um, and I went to Mankato State University and I was going to be um, a nurse anesthetist and I did not know that they had a program here for interior design and I kind of fell into it. And mm -hmm. after, you know, maybe about two or three quarters, I think we were in quarters then, I saw somebody on my floor who was doing something related to design, and I never looked back. Wow. So, so you made a, well, what, I guess where, the direction to go to like nerves, I can never say this word, asthenesis? Anesthetist? Anesthetist. I'm not even going to It try. would be nursing school, right. and then you'd go on to uh, be uh, could, a nurse uh, anesthetist after that. Yeah, you, yes. could, you could apply anesthesia or assist with assist that with process? it okay. yes yeah. yep okay. so um, i grew up near um rochester minnesota so mm -hmm. most people were in the medical field where mm. i you know you either went into the medical field or um worked at ibm or something like that okay um, so i always thought helping people would be the, the way to go and i still feel like that i help people every day but um i felt like that would be a great a great fit for me and I truly did enjoy the sciences and uh, my classes and but I just didn't realize that Mankato offered an interior design program and uh, like I said after the third quarter I never looked back and it, it was a great fit for me and I loved every minute of it. What was the, uh, it just seems, seems like a big career decision to make in college still. So to go from, from two very different types of careers, mm -hmm. like was design kind of always something, I know in, in one of your bios, I think you said in Midwest uh, Magazine, there was something that talked about like Barbies or something like that effect. Yeah, but, like, the dream house. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, where did all that kind of, how, how was that brewing in, in the, in, inside you that you were comfortable enough to make that, that decision? To yeah, make yeah. Well, now that I look back, it was obvious. I was always very detail oriented, um, very sensitive to sight and even um, what was around me, very spatially creative. Um, I had the big yellow Barbie dream house. I chose yellow and not pink. I was uh, against the green a little bit. I liked yellow and it had the elevator and I thought that was very cool. Um, and I really disliked dressing the Barbies. I thought that was the worst. They were very sticky. Mm -hmm. And so, and they were not proportionate. So I just kind of left them off to the side. My brother chose to dismember them and such. And so um, I would actually um, rearrange their furniture and put wallpaper on the um, walls of the Barbie dream house, put rugs, make rugs out of cardboard and just create other 
additional houses made out of cardboard. I had the um, horses and things like that. I would make a stable out of um, cardboard boxes and things wow. like that. So, um, but I wanted to make sure the stable was behind the house. So when you drove up, you saw the house and not the stable. That's yeah. see, that's really interesting to me because you're thinking through all these details of design even at that yeah. early age. Like a lot of people who aren't in the industry think of design as picking out decorations and, yeah, got, and decor, but they don't they don't think that it's you're, you're actually designing function as well. You know? Yeah, it's an approach. It's a whole experience as you drive up to the home, mm -hmm. and so it starts. Uh, it's a, it's like one big story. Mm -hmm. So you're walking in, and, and you start with the. Um, you know, the beginning of the story, the background, and then you come up to the house and here's the middle of the story and then you go to the back of the house and, you know, there's the pool and there, and that's where all the fun right. is, you know, and so, I mean, it's it's not just you flop it there. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of thought that went into it. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's always been present and it, it still is present. And it's so when people ask about, well, how long does it take to do this? and <laughs> Why, why does it take so long? It really is a process. Yeah. Um, and especially when what we do here is we do a ton of uh, new construction or large remodels, and it is a process for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to get information from our clients as much as we can, but we also need to offer them information that may, they may not have thought of. Yeah. And it's an evolution. We may go one direction and then turn back and go the other way. So um, it, it definitely is a process and we're, we're not here to be the quickest and we are here to give the best information yeah. and provide our client with the best service. So aside from getting to know the people that I'm interviewing, um, I'm so as you know, I'm a photographer, obviously, but one of the things that uh, when I was working with a business coach that we discovered when, as we we're probing into like my business a little bit is that um, even though I know my subject well, mm -hmm. like I know what I'm photographing and I understand photography and everything, the one thing I didn't really understand well enough was the process that my clients actually go through. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't really understand fully what an interior designer would like what the process looked like. He was same with an architect or, or a builder. Mm -hmm. And I found that I was only learning little snippets of things um, along the way. Like I'd, I'd pick up on a conversation, you saying, oh, when we were doing this two years ago. Yeah. And it's like, I, I didn't realize, even as a photographer, because I, you know, I'm photographing things when they're all done. Yep. And so part of the reason for this podcast is to not only understand the people that I'm working with, but also to understand that process a little bit more. So in bird's eye view, I know there's so many things, there's so many details you couldn't possibly cover in a short period of time, but what does that process typically look like for you in terms of the design process from the time the the client contacts you? Um, I know you said there's, there's so much involved, but like in general, what kind of things are you, are you going through to, to yeah. Design something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's say there's a new construction project, and we we would reach out to the client and also get the other team members in place. So architect, uh, builder, and um, ourselves, and the clients, and then we would send them a questionnaire that is tailored to them. I mean, we have a lot of the same questions, but let's say it's a different, you know, type of location, and then. What we would do is um, have them send us all that information with some images of what they're thinking the house is like, and depending on the scale of the house, you know, try to get all that information um, organized. Then what we would do is look at um, budgets that they have already decided upon. If they um, haven't, then we need to develop a budget for our time. And if they've talked about a budget with the builder, then we need to know that too. So we know what type of materials we're selecting. Then we like to have an overall, I would say, 30,000 feet uh, kickoff meeting. Mm -hmm. And we have just completed our first total Zoom project. Um, wow. Via, yeah, via Zoom. It was, it's been amazing. And, and we have really good students, so the clients were very, very good at responding. Anyhow, we did, we do a kickoff meeting and we say, how is this all feeling to you? I mean, is this wood floor great? Is this, you know, how is this palette? How are these materials? I mean, because they had a very extensive um, remodel of their home and um, they loved it. So then we knew we're not going down the 
wrong path. Mm -hmm. So then after that, that's important because you, you get too far ahead and you've already invested so much time yeah. and all energy. Yeah. And our goal is to not waste time. It's mm -hmm. to be as efficient as possible, but as thoughtful as possible. How do you keep things on track like that? Because they're, they're not just working with you. Obviously they're still working with their architect and the builder on details. Like how do you, yeah. how do you keep that stuff in line? Well, there's a lot of communication, um, between the, the, the builder and also the architect. Mm -hmm. So usually, unfortunately, we're usually one of the last people in on the project. So there's a little catch up also. So what we always tell our clients is that we have catch up to do. So mm -hmm. we're a lot of times we're a little front heavy on the expenses. Yeah. And we're just blatantly honest because they've been, you know, they, they always take the builder first and then the architect, obviously, because they don't know what the structure is. Right, right. So um, we are just trying to catch up. We're trying to see if there's been, like I said, budgets um, already plugged in there and how the builder likes to present their uh, overall, you know, phase one of the budget. Mm -hmm. um, and every builder does it a little differently. Yeah. Um, some architects also like to be more involved than others, and so that's always different. So I would say no one project's the same. Right. So yeah, so that's what that 30,000 um, feet uh, meeting is, or that kickoff meeting mm -hmm. is all about. Uh, we feel like that's actually um, been really valuable to us. Yeah. And then after that, we can go down to at least 10,000 feet mm -hmm. and really hone in on some of the um, details. Then we start schematics, and then we start filling out the finished schedule, coming in together with the tile and, and um, tile selections and uh, you know just developing each room a little bit more and then we can get into the nitty-gritty where we're really like picking out uh, you know borders and yeah. um, cabinet colors and narrowing knobs. down different yeah, yeah it's just kind of an increment getting more and more detailed so we you know are in phase two now of budget and see how mm -hmm. we're doing to see if we really um you know this is this zoom project that we're working that's on that's just phase two yeah this well, is how many phases are there um probably three before wow, okay. they go to bid wow, okay. or i mean before they go out and just bid it right out but so wow. like we have a um, phase two meeting on budgetary meeting on friday mm -hmm. so he's going to go through so we know that we're around x amount per square foot for uh tiles yeah and we you know, did stay within that. In the kids' bath, we were a little lower. So in the, you know, master bath, what we did is we went a little higher on the floor. We kind of went for our, the gold. Yeah. Uh, we may have to pull back on that and just yeah. do a little bit. But, um, you know, it's up to the clients and whether or not they want to go for that or not. Yeah, and every project's going to be different. And you also have, uh, like you said, sometimes the architect's a little more involved. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also have different styles. You're having to navigate you know uh i've worked on two projects with you so far first one was a little more um i don't know what would you call it like the the lake home but it was a little more yeah a little mountain modern was what uh, uh, the okay. architect had um, named it so definitely a little more traditional, traditional and yeah. um, you know no painted wood anywhere so that was definitely a little bit more lake home ish mm -hmm. um the other one was how, really quick how many so one of the details that I remember is, and Jeff was talking a little bit about, but like the wood and the, like the, the grain and the wood, like, do you have, um, how much say did you have to do in the wood versus like, or with the wood versus what the architect might have to do? Like, are you literally going through every finish in the home and every... Yeah, so... Um, or does that really just depend, obviously, on the... That would depend. Yeah. So Jeff Murphy from Murphy Co. Okay. had uh, a vision already. Yeah. So we had suggested, um, you know, he, he had suggested walnut for the cabinets in the kitchen. And then everything else to be Naughty Elder. Mm. And because it took stain so well. So oh. they had just already had that vision. And so we, we looked at tones of uh, color because mm. of... Uh, the stain of the floor was hickory and, and we um, had a little bit more say in that because it was very durable it was a young family we had a lot of it and so we needed to look at the cost per square foot of that also mm -hmm. and um, where they did splurge was the walnut in the uh, kitchen and right. um, that was where we had to actually it came in quite lavender so we had to stain it to contrast with it and it, it turned out beautifully see and those are the things that i don't think anybody thinks of you know what I mean Correct. like anybody outside of your industry probably like even as a photographer again I'm always looking at the end product yes like I don't I, I and I hear Jeff talking a little bit about the grains in the wood and everything mm -hmm. but to hear that okay there's a whole process in matching like the color and 
Yes. You have to think, you know, years down the road yeah. for like what's what could also happen like with uh, you know like sun damage on the wood eventually. Yeah. Like, there's all kinds of things you have to consider. Or right? the circular and, cuts in the beams. Yeah. Um, the clients liked a little bit of it, but not too much of it. So wow. there's the you know we had a few photos of things that we liked and didn't like, and so we had to train you know we had to figure out what was enough of it. I, I always say design is like baking. Um, there's just a precise amount. I mean, if you have too much lemon in your lemon cheesecake, it's it's not going to taste very good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have not enough, it's going to taste like vanilla. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, and everybody's taste is a little bit different. Yeah. Well, and, and so I cut you off, but you were talking. So the second design we worked on was a little more modern, a little more contemporary. Yes. And you have to, you have to stay up on, you know, what's, I don't know. I, I can't, rep, so I can't design anything. I have no sense of what looks good. I'd hate to show you what my actual no. office looks like, <laughs> no. but it's like, it's, I, I just, I literally have no sense of it. But when I, when I walk into a space, I, I can tell what a good design is, you know, yeah. and, and what, what good. So how do you, how do you just switch between those two? Is it, is it, I don't know if you can even describe it in words. Like, yeah, it's, it's just, they're two completely different designs. And I just, yeah, I think um, I, I I can't really describe it. I feel like the the space itself, the weightiness of things. Like the, the second project we did together was um, organic modern, is what they referred to it as, mm. and I literally had very little to do with the architect in that project. Right, and yeah. I I feel like that was very hard, and I think it would have been a lot um, smoother of a project if we had, mm -hmm. but. I, I think the weightiness of things and... Um, and by the way, that's just the way things work out sometimes. It's not oh, like by choice. Yeah, it's... Absolutely. Like, right. Absolutely. I think, you know, sometimes they're on, you know, to different projects or they leave the the, the um, office that they were at. There's so many different mm -hmm. um, elements that go into it. Um, or they were only retained for X amount and now they're done. Yeah. <clears throat> and or it was, uh, sometimes the, the homeowner has... I don't know. Uh, they kind of direct things too, as well. Absolutely, sure. yeah. or they want to be really involved, and some don't want any involvement, right. which is really hard, also. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, I just, I, there's, there's a feeling you get when you walk in the room, and by getting to know the client and getting a feeling of what they want and how they want it to function. I mean, I always feel like it can function well and be beautiful at the same time. Mm -hmm. You also just mentioned that. You know, you had your first Zoom, mm -hmm. your first whole Zoom planning or whatever. So how do you, without being able to be in the space, well, I guess the structure hasn't been put up yet. So you can't, you can't really walk in yet, right? Well, we actually, this was a large remodel and oh. it was just south of Lake Harriet. And so we actually toured it in, um, you know, very COVID friendly mm -hmm. in October mm -hmm. during the first interview. Got it. And took pictures and had plans and that's it. Mm. And then um, we kept in close contact, obviously got the job. And then we did the kickoff meeting, kept uh, dropping off like bags of like tiles and such. I mean, it wasn't a ton of tiles we suggested and we really feel like due to the kickoff meeting, we, we understood what they wanted and they were extremely happy had, and they gave great feedback. So we, we kept doing that and we were able to really narrow down things and it, it worked wonderfully. Yeah. And uh, they were very responsive and thoughtful with their, um, with their feedback yeah. and it was so helpful. How do you, um, so when you have multiple projects going, and this is just more for my own curiosity, like how do you, you've got to have a pretty structured system, systems in place in order to not only separate the project details, but just your imagination between different projects because if you and if if you're working on a modern design in one case and you're working on a more traditional design in one case mm -hmm. like I couldn't imagine being able to separate those two very easily in yeah. my mind like, yeah how do you manage that process I mean um, well when we do work on a project I do like to set aside you know like lay out the plans and get out um, our you know we have large folders and baskets and stuff and just really absorb where we're at with with things and 
you know, spend a couple hours on it. Mm -hmm. That's when it's most effective and most uh, most gets done. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not to say that when I'm working on another project and I see a fabric, I'm like, ooh, that would be great for this project. And I just walk by and throw it in right. another client's bin just because. And I don't know how that seeps out. Yeah, right. <laughs> that is not intentional, but that is just like, I, or like that, that's the perfect color for mm -hmm. Johnson fab, you know, the Johnson living room. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know how that works. Yeah, um, some things you just can't explain. That's that. just a mystery. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's like with photography, I can't explain why a certain angle will be more appealing to me. Uh, it just is. It, mm -hmm. there, it kind of, there's something that you're kind of scanning and with your brain and with your eyes and then something just kind of clicks yep. and there's some kind of balance inside. That's the way. That's the only way I can really describe it. Almost like a gut reaction. Yeah. Um, and you just listen to it, and it's not like that's always the right one, or maybe it brings you closer to another decision. Right. Um, but, and, and you know, you you also have a lot of your your favorites. Like mm -hmm. I have a favorite tile that I like to use, or a marble tile that is well priced, and it comes in many many different shapes, and mm -hmm. it's a really great Italian marble that is um, in stock and uh, I love the vendor. Yeah, and well, and you get to know a certain product as well and yeah. you can, it's easier for you to maybe envision that in a project that you're working on. Yeah. And then maybe, you know, that doesn't work but at least gives you a starting place. Yes, and so. I know I have samples here in my office so I don't have to go down, get samples, so it right. really does save time. And it's just, that's what I know and that feels good to use it and it, it just is it saves the client time and money of having to go out and reinvent the wheel every mm -hmm. time so that's one thing we offer yeah. as all designers do is their tried and true pieces mm -hmm. that's one thing I could never really wrap my head around how you can take a small like I'm looking at your samples that you have over here oh. like how do you take a small you know not even a, a square foot of like something and like envision it spread across and this is probably something you can't describe with words. Right. <laughs> I just, Again. <laughs> I, I never, I never understood how that's, how you just do something like that. And it, I, I know experience will teach you those things, and you know you have a vision in your head. But going back to all the way when you're designing your your layouts as a as a kid, yep. I mean, you, you it's, it has to be something inside of you that, like a design DNA of some of some sort. Yes. Um, obviously, I, I learned visually. Um, when I see three-fourths of a cup of something for a recipe, I, I'm always talking about baking. I'm, I don't bake, I usually cook. And right. I never measure, so I don't know what I'm talking about really. But um, I see a, picture, a pie picture and three-fourths of it is red and a quarter of it is yellow. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very visual that way, but I am a lucky person. I get to walk into a room and I can see already what it could look like um, and then also when we're trained on floor plans for, okay, I'm on year 25, but um, for 25 years we've been looking at floor plans and that actually helps me, I think, better than standing in the room sometimes. Hmm. And people find that hard to believe. They think I maybe just don't want to come out to their house yeah. or whatever, but I mean, it does help to come out, but I um, I can't really explain that. And I guess maybe it's- That's interesting too, because you're looking at it in 2D. Yep versus like seeing the depth and dimension and everything. And the scale, you know, like I can draw in quarter inch scale, no problem. And I have, um, I had an associate once who did CAD drawing and she could, she's like, she wanted me to sketch out a floor plan. And so I did and she's like, okay, now I'll, is this to scale? And I said, yeah, it's, you know, I've been sketching this for a long time. And she's like, I don't know how you do that. And I right. said to her, since I don't do CAD myself, I'm a little on the, um, I missed that boat. Um, uh, there's still time. <laughs> I, I, well, there's still there's time. No, there's no time I don't think available. there's a desire for me to right. know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm technical um, about 1% of my life. So um, I, I'm not, that's not my gift. <laughs> there's actually something kind of, and that's the thing I noticed about, I don't, I don't know if um, there's a lot of architects who still, traditionally sketch yes. the start there and like I oh, I love that I'm a huge like so I actually I'm I, I sketch like my my art quote, quote unquote mm -hmm. before photography I sketched like I drew like mm -hmm. I drew lines believe it or not I actually used to do graffiti when I was a little little nice hooligan. and um, <laughs> the thing about doing graffiti even and I wasn't doing like the sloppy tagging I was doing like murals with like uh, commission murals and whatnot yeah and um, there's a, there's this balance in there, and it's it's not it's nowhere near architecture or anything like that. But you're still working with angles, and you 
you're like finding balance and there's there's just a way letters flow and the, the, the type of work that I would do was more three-dimensional looking mm -hmm. um, so there wasn't any hard lines really it was all um, it was all done with shadows and, and highlights so when I when I I think architecture always kind of clicked for me especially modern architecture because it resembles at least the, the kind of graffiti that I was doing, it resembles modern architecture in a way. Mm -hmm. And same with the design, when I look at certain design elements, like st any kind of stonework or uh, cabinetry, the way the lines, the way lines work in geometry. So I've always been kind of fascinated with that. And yeah. people could never understand how I could visually put something in three dimension with no measurements, no mm -hmm. clear light. It's just, you have this imagination, are you in your imagination, you can almost see where light's coming from and you can, you can envision depth in a way that's just not really describable. Yeah, and I think um, you've probably worked that muscle uh, yeah. it, so many times, and, and, and I have too. I remember that's all we did was draft and do line. And then we had one class in college that was called Minicad, uh -huh. and it was a summer class. So it may not have been as intense as it no, should have been. But you at least got a feel for what the... Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think it looks very professional and great. But at the same time, I love to draft. It's very uh, therapeutic. It's quiet. Mm -hmm. It's um, It feels really good. And uh, But, you know, it's, it's really just not a time saver by any means either. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just have to do what you have to do and yeah. um, get it across. But I, I do like doing the, the tile layouts and things like that too. I think that tells a story about where it's going to be placed and helps paint a picture for a client so they can understand. And there's also something about putting pencil to paper oh. that is like that yeah. that tangible, I don't know. I, again, something you really can't describe with words, but it's... Yeah. I just had an architect tell yeah. me that, I can't even remember, the, I don't think I'm gonna remember the word, but he, he just said it was very tactile, I think he yeah. said. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's, yeah, and yeah. he's like, there's something about it. Because I said, do you by chance have CAD drawings of this? He's like, no, the whole thing is hand-drawn. I'm like, I wonder if there's a way to, <laughs> you know, get yeah. it into Yeah, the you can send CAD. it off to people and yeah. they'll, they'll convert it or whatever. But, but, yeah, just seeing that initial sketch is always really, and it's, when you're looking at elevations and you oh. see all, even like little notes, like little side notes that you can't even read, um, just, just Something about that, and like, uh, I'm really attracted to like old manuscripts. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever really looked into that? Like, yeah, I, yep. don't, I don't really know what they say or anything, but just the, the the thought of like, there's all these Instagram accounts that I'd follow that um, are just people who draft and and do sketching in notebooks. Yeah, and they just the the I don't know that they make these manuscripts. There's there's people who do this with like architecture. They just do street beautiful street drawings of just different. Mm architectural elements in their city but they'll make little notes and just all the all of those details like fascinate me mm -hmm. so I'm, always, I'm I'm regularly sharing like whenever I see people sketching cool things like that they just mm -hmm. they hit a spot in me that's very yeah fulfilling I guess yeah Satisfying. I know um, uh, my son is a big he loves to sketch and um, my my oldest daughter too she took a art class and she blew us all out of the water didn't know she could sketch and she sketched a picture of me and it was it was crazy how accurate it was yeah. um, and my son is more of a free sketcher but um, it's just amazing I think it's just different for everybody mm -hmm. um, so what's the future look like uh, foreseeable future near future like what direction are you taking things I know you have people coming on on your team yeah yeah, yeah. yep so we have a lead designer and we have a project manager mm -hmm. And we are doing um, a lot of new construction. Uh, the summer is very fall, um, into the fall. And um, we are looking at starting an e-commerce. Mm. Um, and that is developing. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about that over yeah, the Yeah, yeah. So um, I have uh, got my eyes on some things and trying to develop that, which really excites me. Yeah. And um, all, in, all the while we'll be working on projects here. So mm -hmm. I love new construction and um, I feel, um, well new construction and large remodels, um, I just feel like that is um, a process that I love. And mm -hmm. um, I love to get to know clients that long, um, except for when they're done, we always say we have to break up. And I yeah. say, well, it's time for that summer home yeah. now. Right, summer home, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so mm -hmm. that's what we're doing here and we're busy and we're loving what we do, so. What's, so the, when the when the e-commerce things, is that gonna be under the same Renee Keller or is it gonna be a separate? It'll uh, be separate. Okay. Um, it'll be 
pro- it'll be under. There's probably not a lot of King Nolan's you just yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we have the name and all of that, but we're um, we're still figuring things out as far as where to purchase and and all of that. But um, it it is all set up, and we're just um, figuring out uh, when to launch and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's exciting. I like uh, new businesses, and um, I think it's fun. Yeah, as if you're not already busy enough, let's start a whole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It it excites me. I think it's fun. and I, I don't know, I like that part of it. Mm-hmm. So. Well, so you've been doing, you launched this uh, 11 years ago now. Yep, so 2010. This, is this the first new venture you've? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so. It's a big step. I guess it's a step in the right direction though. I mean, it's you're, you're able to keep this, but you have kind of another element of design in general, of like but yeah. from uh, e-commerce. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And I think, um, you know, my, my client will be, um, many of like my clients that I have now that are probably uh, the ones that are very savvy at shopping and that is the level of client that I would like to focus yeah. on for the e-commerce. So it's um, a higher end client mm-hmm. that has a good eye mm-hmm. um, and is willing to um, look for some of those special pieces that mm-hmm. uh, their designer has directed them to look yeah. for. So. Well, it sounds like a great idea, and best of luck with that. And Thank obviously, you. we'll work together again in the future. But thanks so much for coming on and doing this with me. You have a beautiful location. If anybody's at the Design Center, oh, is IMS? Yep, International in Market Square. Yep. In, yep. in Minneapolis. Um, they can just stop by. I, this is my first time here. Oh. Um, and the, the locations amazing it's beautiful yes architecturally it and um it's nice that you're able to customize the space i mean how, how long ago did you set the space up this space i've been here a year and a half, and a half um okay. i have been here in the building nine years however okay. um in various areas of uh, two other areas mm-hmm. that we some people share spaces it's very yeah. convenient um, to meet clients here and it's a great building to come to um, it is just redone and, you know, free parking and yeah. it's, it's just great. Um, yeah. natural light and, uh, it's been wonderful. Yeah. So we really like it here. Yeah, awesome. Well, again, thanks so much for coming yeah, on and, uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for having me. Yeah. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much for listening to Midwest Architecture and Design. If you're an architect, designer, or builder and would like to collaborate on a project together and be interviewed on this podcast, please reach out to me at jordanpowers.com. Now, if you'd like to help keep me motivated to continue making these, just knowing that you found this worth watching or listening to is reason enough. So please do me a favor and subscribe wherever you're listening to this or watching so that I know what kind of reach this is getting. Also, if you're listening to the audio only version of this, you can watch the episode for free at MidwestArcDesign.com. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Jordan Powers without the vowels.